Hi guys, this is Mike back with another Django tutorial for you. Um, this week we're going to cover a, a different subject than we've covered before in the past. Something uh, that's going to be really helpful to you when you reach some sticky situations once developing your applications. It's the subject of signals. Now, signals are um, a kind of a system where we can message uh, around in the background of the, of the Django framework to let processes know when certain things have happened. Um, if you've programmed in other web-based languages like, P, by, like P, PHP, for instance, you might uh, know about something called hooks in PHP, which is a very similar concept to signals in Django. Now, what it allows us to do is it allows us to know when um, something like um, a article has been posted on us on the site which has been created in the database um, and we can hook in or, or attach to certain parts of the process as it happens so for instance um, if we take the example of our user registration um, section when we did it that we did in a previous tutorial we have a process where we check to see whether the post method is post and then we build a form uh, from this my registration form and if it's valid we then save it now at the point when we trigger that save method in the Django framework there are a number of things that are notified in the system so there's a notification to say I'm about to save this form and there's also a notification to say I have now completed saving this form and these events um, can be hooked onto or connected so that we can then react to those sorts of things as well now if I just remind you of, of the past tutorial when we did the, uh, the extending of the user model when we did the registration we could only register the user model itself so when we had our extra user profile model that added on as the extra part to it and give us these extra uh, pieces of information for our user we then had to add this this little bit of code here which basically created a profile member variable and whenever we accessed that user profile member variable it triggered a lambda function that automatically created a new user profile object in connection with the user uh, object that had been created so that was kind of a, a an easy way to fix that but we could have done it much more simply by using signals signals would have allowed us to say whenever the user object has been created successfully in the database let us run some code that then automatically creates us a user profile at the same time. So that all happens at the time the user is created, not at a later date when we actually end up accessing this profile. So how do we do that? Well, we basically just need to input, import uh, a couple of objects into this models file and then set up a function that knows what to do in terms of creating the objects. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do some imports at the top here. So we're going to first of all import from Django DB models signals the post save method, which is basically the the thing that gets triggered after we've saved our user. So after the user model has, been, has created a new instance and saved it into the database, it will trigger this function, or this event rather, signal, call it whatever you will, um, and we're going to hook onto this and, know what, uh, and do some processing once that's been triggered. The next thing we need to do is we need to import our method by which we are going to hook those things together or connect them. And we're going to, from Django dispatch imports something called receiver. Now receiver is a decorator function which basically means that it's meant to wrap around a normal function and give it um, some extra functionality and in the case of this it gives it the extra functionality to know how to connect 
to the post save event in our system. So we've imported that. I want to also import a little bit more because I want to be able to log this in my log file. So I'm going to log, import the login system here. And then next we'll actually start to use the actual decorator. So what we do is, as with all decorators, you start with the at symbol. Then we're going to say this is a receiver for the post save event. And the sender of this event is a user. So the user object will have been saved. It will send a post save message through the system. And we want to hook onto this to wait or to, to watch or receive any of these post save messages in the system. And what we're going to do is we're going to link that to a function which I've so so um, small, so minusculely named make sure user profile is added on user created. It has two arguments, the sender, which is going to be an instance of user and some keyword arguments. Now, if you haven't seen these before, it's basically a dictionary of of all kinds of things can be in there. It could be like objects, it could be um, some strings, it could be numbers, anything. But in this case, we're going to look at two particular things that we're looking for inside of there. Now, the first thing we're going to check inside the keyword arguments is is created false or true. If it's created, this whole statement should statement should come back true. If there's no created in there, then a default value of false will be returned, which basically means that it, there's, this is not an opportunity where something's been created, so we're going to ignore it. What we're really interested to see is if this statement is true, because if it is true and there is a new user um, object that's been created, we want to be able to then create our user profile alongside it. The way that we do that is we go user profile objects create user which refers to this member variable here equals keyword arguments get instance because inside of our keyword arguments not only does it tell us if it's been newly created but it also supplies us with an actual instance of the user object so then we can use this to create our new user profile and link it in to the user object and then finally we're just going to add some login in just to say uh, output this variable that we've created which contains our newly created user profile into the log files so that we can know it's been created and it's as simple as that this should now watch in the background and wait for any user to be created and automatically tack on a user profile. So from now on, our profile variable, whenever it runs, should always really come back true because it's already had the user profile created in this little section of code here. So let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to run the server. And that seems to have worked OK. I'm going to put a breakpoint here because when, when we register a new user, I want to see that this, the breakpoint here and see what's inside of our keyword arguments to s just to examine what's inside of there and give us a, a better idea of what's actually available inside of there. So we've got register just here. Okay, so um, new user. Um, for goodness, uh, I don't know, um, hamster. Email hamster. And I don't know, um, cheeky.com. The password will be um, something and something again so when we click register I expect this to light up and 
show us that there's something happening within the ID because I want to see that it's stopped at the breakpoint. So let's click that and there we go, it's gone slightly highlighted. And here we are. Inside here we've stopped and in the sidebar we've got, just open that up a bit, we've got um, the keyword arguments just in the locals. So we've got instance, which is an instance of the user model, as we can see in the list. The signal, uh, sorry, no, created is equal to true, so that's good. We've got a signal dispatcher and using default sender, model base, lots of information in there that can be useful depending on what you're trying to do. For our purposes, we're just looking at this created and this instance and that tells us enough to be going on with so inside of instance you can see it's got the email address the date joined loads of information in there so we can step through there that tells me that everything seems to be fine and that we've got a valid user object that's come through here just for the sake of that next we're going to create the user profile just by stepping through one User profile should be then, where are we? Here we are. So it's created that. It's associated the, the user object and everything perfectly. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. And then finally, we're just gonna drop it all out into the log file. So we should see something happening in this log terminal here. Uh, just get my I'm just going to release this and let it continue with the process. And that should be fine. I'll take my breakpoint away because I don't really need it anymore. And we saw in the log, user profile models, user profile created. And there we have the register is uh, successful. So just to double check for the sake of paranoia, let's have a look inside of our, our local development database. So we should be able to see in auth user, so if I do select from whoop, star from auth user and we want to join um what's it called? User profile. User profile underscore user profile because Django tends to name things that way on auth user dot ID so we want the user ID to link through to the user profile and inside of um, the user profile just let's continue typing there this is normally why I don't normally live type things because my communication ability goes downhill quickly because I can't walk and chew bubblegum as they say in the acting business. So we want it to match up from the user ID the u with the property inside of the user profile table which is called user ID, user underscore ID. And that should then pull out some rows of some of the users along with their profile information so let's go there we go so that last one hamster and also we can see the extra bits that the user profile adds on to it you can also see that these are blank because obviously we've created a blank user profile we haven't actually put any information in there and the way that we probably uh, get that populated is by sending a message to the user once they're logged in that yeah, you've, you're only half filled in your user information and give them a link through to say complete your registration here type of thing. Okay, so as you can see, signals are very easy, very nice to, to hook up and can do you a lot of, uh, a lot of nice or things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do on your own. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. 
and next week I'm going to take this a step further and show you a bit more advanced signals and how we can actually send messages and create signals of our own so that other people who may be using our apps can then hook into some of the processes that are going on behind the scenes in our apps as well and uh, this will give you a more rounded out view of the whole signal situation but this has been an introduction and shows you that you know and as at the very basic level you can hook into existing signals and get code running from those for yourself so uh, i hope that you enjoyed this and it was educational for you if it was then please click the like button and if you want to know more about the tutorials in the future including next week's uh, advanced signals tutorial then please click the subscribe button and we'll send you an update as soon as that's available thanks for watching